to the music room. So today in the music room we have Chad Anthony Smart. He is a friend of mine who was first in Jamaica and has now migrated overseas but still involved in music. So we're going to talk about cross-culture music. Hi Chad. Hey Abby, how are you? Good to see you. Oh good. We've been trying to good make this happen you, for a while. We've been you. we've been trying to make this happen for a while. And I'm grateful, a number while. one, that I even came I'm grateful that I even came to mind, number one. And then I'm grateful that you had patience with me uh yeah. to kind of get it going. I know that it's been crazy for everyone. Uh the world is kind of crazy right now, but I'm Pretty grateful. Much. So good to be here. Yeah. Welcome. So uh, welcome to the music room. So the first question that we ask is, are you a music lover? Uh, yes, I am a music lover. Music is a part of, I think, who I am. Uh, it was actually a big part of my development, I think. And still to this day is a big part of what drives me. So yeah, I am a music lover. Great. So uh, what kind of genre are you more into? Oh, <laughs> You know, I know that, so, okay, so firstly, I focus a lot on worship music, but I'm a big R&B guy. And then, don't crucify me, but Calypso and Soka will always have a special place. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> will always have a special place in my heart. Okay, all right, so worship, but you know it's really about the Calypso and the Soka. Which one, right, when I moved so to the United States um, and started singing in churches here, Coming from Jamaica, where you say, oh, I sing gospel music. In my mind, gospel music is any music that talks about the gospel. Here, right. when they say gospel music, they really just mean black American. Uh, and so when I'd be like, oh, we sing gospel music at church. like, And they're like, no, this is a Christian contemporary. contemporary. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. You know, so that was a big crossover for me some of some some of the language as well as even just the approach to worship was very different when i moved here so that that's something interesting which i'm sure we'll dive into at some point yeah we're gonna talk about that we're gonna talk about that so uh as you have kind of alluded to and as i said earlier we're gonna talk about cross-culture music so coming from jamaica going to america what was it like but where are we gonna start so we're gonna start at tell us about your background in music what age were you when you got started? How did you get exposed? Was it church? Was it your family? Was it community? Uh, all of the above. So I started off, <laughs> so firstly, I grew up in church. So, you know, my father, into this day, is still a pastor. Uh, he was a deacon many years ago when I was in Jamaica. And at the Escarpment Road, I grew up at Escarpment Road, New Testament. That's actually where I met Abigail uh, years ago. Yeah. Uh, but before all of that, my mother used to be a uh, full-time, all-the-time worship, she's a worship leader, but she's also a professional singer uh, with several different gospel bands. She spent most of her years with a group called Love Singers, did a short run with like Grace Thrillers. And so I grew up around music because of my mother and, and you know, her friends and the people. So that was when I initially got exposed to it. Um, we de they then were involved in like, the choir at Escarment Road. My brother was on the choir too, believe it or not. I know he'll eventually yes. see this. Andre does not sing anymore at all. Neither does mommy, by the way. My but mother he can. He can. But he can. Well, you know, it, it, um, singing is like one of those things where if you don't use it, you lose it. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, so neither mommy nor Andre sings anymore, actually, which is something okay. that many people... So you're the only one holding up the fort. Uh, yeah, I'm the only one that keeps going. And truthfully, it's similar to them, music and my participation in it isn't what it once was, which I'll, I'll divulge a little bit more. It's now just like a part of my life. It, before, I think I was moving towards making it the center of my life. It was... The thing that I was pursuing, I wanted to do background vocals. And I, you know, when I was on the island, I was working with Kevin Downswell, did recordings with all these different people, um, sang with Chosen Vessel, um, and Latoya Hall Dono, you know, very good friend of mine. So that was yeah. my initial exposure to music, started in the church, started with singing on the choir, which, by the way, they didn't want to let me on in the first place because I was horrible. Um, and Travers Francis. So yeah, how does man. this work? How, how does this even work? work? No, you know, so to this day, I tell people all the time if you have the desire and you're willing to put in the work, Facts. I think anything is possible. Anything is possible. So, uh, Travers Francis, we used to call him Kevin, he was the choir director at Discovery Road. 
uh, who he passed away a couple of years ago, Kevin, took me seriously when I said, hey, I want to sing. Firstly, I'd show up at his choir rehearsal with my mother and my brother and try to sing. And they'd be like, hey, shh, 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 wait, babe. Don't no, do it. No, 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 stop trying. Um, and he would say, come, you know what? I'm going to give you some stuff to work on. Um, I'm going to talk with you through this. Uh, you know, it's, he believed in me when there was no evidence that it was going to be possible to sing and lead. And he's the first, one of the first ones to ever take a chance with me. And then Latoya uh, came into my life a little bit more. I knew her years ago because my mother used to sing. Latoya Haldona, she used to sing with Grace Thrillers for years. That's where she kind of right. cut her teeth, sharpened her, her skills. I credit a lot of my growth as a... I can now consider myself a professional musician, a professional worship leader that even makes... That's even a word. Mostly because of my, my growth and development under her stewardship. So those are two very noteworthy people who invested time with me uh, when I decided when I when I was attracted to the life of singing and music. But more so, it wasn't just the fact that you were standing in front of others; it's what I saw music do to people while they're while they're delivering it. Uh, that was so, the most well, attractive. What thing. is that? Describe that to us. Oh man, okay, and bringing it full circle because we're whole people. When Whitney Houston sings and you see that lip tremor, <laughs> I just see it as passion trying to leave her body it was i don't know how to explain it any other way it's just how people come alive when they believe what they're singing which is why i think even to this day my truthfully I, i'm not involved in music in anywhere outside of leading worship because the word of god and his spirit is what animates and motivates me and even though i'm no longer full-time as a worship leader i have a secular job in the corporate world um, that is still a core part of who I am. And so that's why I kind of also just remain in worship music because it, it right. does something to remind me, remind my heart, my spirit, my mind as I go through about who made me, who he says I am, all that kind of stuff. And I just have the pleasure of helping to tell other people that while holding a microphone sometimes. Uh -huh. So that's, that's just kind of where it comes from. Well, you mentioned that you weren't so good at singing when you just found out um but when did you realize that you could be a soloist because i know chad to be a solo singer a lead singer and a group singer so when did that happen how long did it take for you to become solo worthy hmm. well if you ask the question that way if i'm going to be honest with you to this day i don't think i'm solo worthy oh um i never actually thought i was ever solo worthy in music and working in, I'm usually working with a band, working with other singers. That's where you really learn about teamwork. And so a lot of the principles that I have learned throughout my journey and development in music is maybe what has equipped me to execute the way that I do in the corporate world. Um, a lot oh. of learning that, yeah, man, everybody in First Corinthians where it says some of us are eyes, some of us are hands. We all have a different role to play and none is more important than the other. Even though sometimes we think ourselves more important. All of those core beliefs started with my journey in music. Uh, but going back to Kevin, once again, I remember we had a youth congress. So, you, you know, we're from the New Testament church. I have no clue who's watching this. Right, that's, right. That's, the, that's the umbrella of churches that we're under. And we had a youth congress one year. And, oh, the Escom Road Youth Choir used to be the thing. Mm. Uh -huh. And Kevin, one year, says, Chad, I want, to te I want you to lead a song. He just throws you. He just throws, throws you. Throws you. By the way, that was the year that something went wrong. I don't know if it was some kind of, um, something with the weather or something, and it got canceled. But I did intentionally spend time for months getting ready for this one song. And so I don't even remember the rest of the song, but I remember, because I remember he'd say, Chad, <laughs> he would say ad lib. And I'm like, how do you ad lib? I don't know what to do. And so he would teach me an ad lib and then I would go home and swatch it. I'd go home and run it over, over and over. So now oh. here I am maybe 10 years, maybe more than 10 years after that. And I remember the ad libs, but I cannot remember the song. <laughs> if I'm honest with you. Oh, um, do you that, know what song it was? I do not know the song. I just remember the ad libs. It was something I won't oh. go. So they have, go when he calls you, go when he says go. I, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I don't know what song was, but I just remember the, the, the ad libs. But all that We're going to find out. We're going to find out. You know, we'll look for it. But that was when I realized that I had the capacity to lead. Okay. Um, I always thought I was not the best option, 
but I stopped shying away from saying yes. Um, because I, I realized, I have a very interesting thought about, you know, shame and guilt, how it's still a form of pride. Because it's like the Lord is inviting you to do things. He's equipped you. And you're the one telling God why you can't. And God is like, you don't right. know who I am. I'm the one that gave you the gift. The gift that you keep saying is not good enough. I'm the one opening doors and saying, come on, walk through. And you're saying, that's not my door to walk through. Mm -hmm. And so I had to eventually kind of like, just say, okay, I want to try this. Um, but I, I don't want it to seem like it was my within my own power that I kept saying yes and kept trying. The Lord has always surrounded me with people who saw more in me than I saw in myself. Uh, and that's right. why in, from the from the go, I can call names like Kevin and, and Latoya. But th that list continues. Even your own dad. Uh, Reverend, Reverend Samuel was one of those when he was going to, there was a band that he worked with um, that they were coming back together. And he's like, we need some singers. And yeah, he pulled myself and there were two others, Janice and, and Tatiani. Uh, and he was like, hey, you know, you guys can hold some harmonies. We're going to take a chance with you. All, all along my journey, I've had people in my life who've taken risks with me, yeah. and given me a chance and said, you know what, I will, even if you make mistakes, I'm okay working with you. So dare I say that's the same story when I moved here. In terms of singing and music, what context do you prefer singing? Do you prefer praise and worship singing? Do you prefer a group like an ensemble? Do you prefer choir or do you prefer background vocals you know they're all different dynamics they all have different pros and cons to it different things to like and to dislike about it so what is your favorite context of music of singing well right now i would say worship praise and worship in particular mm -hmm. i but there's value in every one of those that you call it every single one of those when, even when traverse was not able to keep directing the choir and i was invited to start directing and i'm like uh okay there are other yes. people firstly the same choir that i wasn't about to be on remember yes. the same choir that i was not gonna be put on yeah i'm gonna start preaching on this thing eventually <laughs> i was invited to direct that same choir it took a whole different skill set a whole different level of dedication and you had to know everyone's parts um so mm -hmm. the, the, so as a leader it, you know, it was great because you got intimate time with the members to kind of impart, to work with. But if I'm honest with you, you know, at this point in my life, I find more value in helping to put the music in other people's mouths to sing to the Lord. And that's what right. praise and worship is, you know. Right, it's right. me help, helping to open a pathway so that you can commune with the Lord. Uh, so, and you know, I, I think it's because of also the context that I'm in. The church that I attend right now does not have a choir. Um, okay, so it's not even an option. Really. So it's not even an option, really. So w would I, you know, would I would I shift a little bit if I went in a different mm -hmm. context? It's very possible. Um, and I think that, you know, okay. it's open, being open to wherever the Lord directs you, whatever he'll use to do. So you're not overseas. You've said that a couple of times. So when you were in Jamaica, how involved are you in music? Like you have mentioned that you were on a choir, that you led a choir, that you directed a choir, not just that you were on it, but at some point you directed, mm -hmm. that you were in praise and worship. But how, what other ways were you involved? Um, not, not just in church necessarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, you know, it, it, got, it got pretty dynamic for a while. So when I started university, I started singing with a band on campus called Pop Society. So that was all pop music and mm -hmm. you know, they did concerts all over the campus. So that was, my, that was actually my first step outside of gospel slash Christian music. Was because it I, awkward for you? I must ask that. Uh, Were you nervous to enter into another area? I, because, you know, growing up, growing up, the theology that my life was built on before I started like diving into scripture of my own made it feel a little bit too legalistic. Like you felt like you had to only do things within the four walls of the church. And that mm -hmm. was that was rough because then now I felt like I was doing something wrong by by, by singing anything besides yeah. scripture, which 
you know, I'm willing to have a discussion with anybody. You can DM me if you <laughs> like. I can talk more about that. But I firmly believe in, you know, if if it doesn't contradict the word of God, then I see no, no nothing wrong with because also it's about you know getting out there. So it was weird at first because I felt like I had to hide it. Then I started seeing a lot more around the campus, but then they'd be invited to do a lot of. This is when the soloing part started, and I was a John Legend Tete. <laughs> and I was a John Legend. <laughs> this day, I still love John Legend. Uh -huh. um, and there's this one song of his called "If You're Out There" that I really took to. Very, it's a more of a humanity. That's the one. Yes, ma'am. I even record a cover of it. It's somewhere in the world. Uh, on, oh, we're gonna find it. Huh? Yes, it's we're somewhere on, it. on, on, on on the internet. There, I think it's on SoundCloud too. With that said. Um, started doing that, and so it opened many more doors. There was another a reggae band that was going to Jazz and Blues Festival, and they're like, "Hey, one of our background vocalists left. We heard of you." This is when I was like, "You heard of me?" Like, you heard? I sing at church and I sing at my school. Like, who is talking about me? And that was when I got invited. But that group was called Black Out School. I did a couple months, I think maybe a little over a year with them. Because it went from that to they were releasing an album and getting ready for a bunch of stuff. Um, this so you're on an album, at least uh, one album. I recorded background vocals. I did. I did. A, I, I, then I started recording background vocals a lot more. I remember one day I called Latoya. I said, Latoya, uh, someone invited me to come record vocals at the, at the studio, and they said, "What's my fee? I don't know what to charge. I've never charged." Ah, yeah. No, so I went from at such an and, and so. Even more so, I, there was an embryonic stage with these people. And then as my craft grew and the recognition of the craft grew to know it was about to be monetized, I didn't know what to do. So I also called and was like, hey, you know, I don't know what to, somebody said, hey, come sing at uh, an award ceremony. It's mm -hmm. one song, I sing the track, how much do I charge? And she did a call like that for me almost every two weeks, I promise you. Um, <laughs> and so that's kind of, and so I went from that and then actually did some recordings with, and Marley and Wayne Marshall. And so it, it kind of started bellowing and bellowing. If, if anything at all along my journey, I'm very aware that I've lived a very dynamic life, you know, because the fact that I was able to grow so much in a musical space, but at the same time, I was still developing professionally. I had a, I had a job on my, at university. Um, so in always, it's always like I wore two hats because I was working at my university, then went to work at Nepal, Eventually, there was a time when I was at the, 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 the International Airport there in Kingston, Jamaica. And then, of course, the, one of the most notable moments for my career was when I was at Sajikor in the marketing department. And all of that was happening in a very public-facing way while I was still, you know, shifting gears on the other side musically. Right. So I settled down a little bit more when I started singing with Kevin Donswell as one of his background vocalists. That was kind of where I was. Okay, I will sing at church. I will sing with Kevin. And do this. Okay. Why yeah. did you decide to settle down at that point? Was it just, you know, where you were in life or was it, okay, I found somebody I want to sing with and I'm not going to run up and down anymore? No, I just felt like I had to start making some harder life choices. I, I was being taken seriously from a professional standpoint. They were trusting me for projects. But then you're leaving work at six to rush to rehearsal or to rush to get ready for a show. Mm -hmm. it, it just became increasingly harder to do all things well. And, you know, it's okay. something that the Lord invites us to, to pursue. And sometimes that, you know, means you have to say no to some stuff. That's true. I started shifting gears. Are you still continuously involved at that level? Mm. So, meaning now in the United States? In the United States. Okay. I, I have dialed back quite a bit. Um, you know, this is being recorded in 2021, praise the Lord. 2020 was a year. Uh, I went through a lot of change. I got laid off from my previous role, shifted gears, got a new job, and I'm now, as I mentioned earlier, in a corporate space where it's pretty demanding. It's a whole new uh, industry. And the level of leadership is quite intimidating. So I'm trying to honor, honor by one doing making the same decision I would have made a couple years ago. Stepping back with my level of involvement, 
order to be a good steward of what the world is entrusted me with right now. I okay. still love the music, but it's not at the level that I once was. So what else has God entrusted you with besides the art of music or the heart of music? What would you say God wants you to do also? Now, because some of us, you know, want to sing and want to work, but, mm -hmm. you know, not, are not sure how to balance the two or whether or not God wants them. Or it's not even just singing. I wants to play, wants to be involved in ministry, period. Um, yeah. But you realize that God has something else for you to steward. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. Um, so what is it that you are good at other than singing? I know you're good at probably a million things. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no. Mm -mm. Uh, <laughs> wow, that, that question went deep just now because, I don't know, you said you have more questions, but I'm going to just rip the mandate out. So no, okay, I, okay. <laughs> I was um, full-time with a church here in Miami called um, Christ Fellowship Miami, great church. Um, she's about 10,000 plus people per weekend. Um, we have seven campuses across. Wait, 10,000? Yeah, like it's a pretty big church, you know. My, it's a, <laughs> coming from Escarment Road with 700 people. Yeah. And my engagement with technology wasn't what it was. Moved here, now they're using in-air monitors with a metronome. The sets are planned. It was a whole culture shift. Uh, but I'm like, God, I don't know what you're doing. But same <laughs> mindset, like I said, we invite him to the the choir. Same mindset. I am going to say yes. And it's this time, if I sing a wrong note, it's in front of thousands. Before uh -huh. I sing in front of the church congregation and I'm seeing. Um, when I got laid off from the church because of COVID, the doors were closed. We weren't seeing people that we were seeing there was no way to justify having a full-time staff the way that we did have i kind of wrestled with the lord like god do you like me i felt like he called me into ministry i felt like mm -hmm. i felt like we, we were on a journey for the past three almost four years and all of a sudden that's not the case anymore what's interesting is the lord has helped me to realize that going back to the four walls story that i mentioned like the salt is not as effective when it's still locked in the salt bottle, you know? If I sprinkle you in, a, in, a, in an area where there isn't salt and there isn't light, I'm inviting you to do that. So something that the Lord has shown me that he's inviting me to be a part of is just stewardship and discipleship outside the church. Interacting with people who are far from him, who are spiritually dead. Yeah. And firstly, ensuring that I've been reading through first and second Peter where you know he's talking to the elect exiles. Cause that's exactly what I felt like. I felt like he elected me to exile me. It's exactly oh. what he said, yo, but that's okay. Do you not believe that I will still care for you? And I have already given you a manuscript of what it looks like to govern yourself while you're out there with the Jews, the Gentiles, the Philistines, while you're out there, feeling like you're alone, you know that you're not alone, and I've already given you action items. Mm -hmm. So that is truthfully where my calling is right now. Um, do I believe that there is more of a pastoral calling? I, I don't want to say that kind of stuff because, you know, there's a weight to what that means. Yes, there is. But, you know, how does that work, my friend? How does that work? Of course. So, um, having been transitioned from full-time to part-time, what would you say is the difference between having your job be surrounded by God and mm -hmm. then not, I mean, not surrounded by God? <laughs> yeah, the I know same. You <laughs> Trust me. You know, Abby, I'm going to be very transparent with you. I think many persons have an idea of what it looks like to work full-time in ministry. And then, and then there's a reality. Mm -hmm. Now, working in a church of that magnitude, there is a level of organization that is necessary. Right. Now, in many people's eyes and ears, that sounds like the church is a company. But the larger things get <clears throat> is the more intentional you need to be. With more preserve, structure you need. With structure. With, you have to be intentional about just accountability across the board. I, I, I'm grateful because I was wired differently coming from the world that I came from. 
coming from the days when you had to figure out how to, you have a street meeting and the mic now work, but worship off go on. Yeah, man, worship. Work. Um, you never have no monitor. I show you the words in front of you. So the confidence monitor goes down and you don't, and you need to figure out how to lead the people. So I'm grateful because I was cultured in a different part and then transplanted. Um, mm -hmm. I saw how much of a struggle it was for those who this is all they ever know. Dare I say, there are things I'm experiencing now in my court, in my secular job that don't surprise me because I'm surrounded by non-believers. But in that world, there were things that happened that did surprise it's me. Different. Okay. Like, what, 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 what? And it's like, oh yeah, but yeah, it is what yeah. it is. But I wouldn't trade it at all because then it was an invitation for me in like Matthew 18. If, if there's something that I need to call out, to have the courage to come and speak to you, you know, person to person. Face to face, yeah. If there's something that can't be resolved here, then you bring an elder. So I confront you, and I bring your direct report in. You know, going back to, for everything that we never face, even now, I still have a step-by-step -step guide of how to navigate it day by day. So it was a culture shift, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I was looking